Hi there, welcome back. Well, this is another PCB video, and um, the purpose of this one is actually to build something which is going to be my version 2 of the previous project. It's the Pi Attenuator, which uh, started off with this thing. What it is, is an attenuator that will attenuate a certain number of dBs using or keeping the same uh, impedance. This one is designed for 50 ohms. This is a 6 dB, this is 12 dB, this is 18 dB. And uh, what it means is I put a signal in here and I can attenuate it by the number of dBs that I add on here. Now, because of the nature of decibels, you can sum them. In other words, if I want a 30 decibel uh, drop, I add 18 and 12, that's 30. I can do 36. I can do just 6, I can do just 12, I can do just 18, and so on and so forth. Now, what I did previously is I actually designed a board. But, as a result of this design, I had quite a lot of comments, and uh, as with all prototypes, the purpose of this was to do a first experiment, and then correct some of the errors. The actual DBs that I designed for, uh, 3, 6, 12, and 18, and um, somebody mentioned you can get 18 anyway with 6 and 12, so why make this one 18? Why not make this one 24? And that makes perfect sense, because with 24 I can get more combinations of uh, attenuation. This video is sponsored by PCBWay, and they kindly supplied me with uh, these PCBs, which I haven't opened yet. Here they are. I love getting presents. It's nice. Now, PCB Way allowed me to get these five PCBs, and I, I, I keep getting surprised by this. You know, this is uh, the sort of thing that makes uh, an amateur like me start looking professional. These projects really end up looking good, and uh, this is all thanks to the this uh, type of service that allows you to actually do prototyping very, very fast. I just did the um, Gerber files, or I did the PCB layouts, and then I send it off to PCBWay on their website. It's all very easy, very simple, and you know, a couple of days later this thing is done, which is always great. It takes a lot longer to ship than uh, to produce, but that's not their problem. That's the fact that I live on an island. It's a great place to live, but we have our little drawbacks like uh, shipping times, but that's a different story. So here we are, we've got the, uh, the new boards and I chose black because I wanted to. You can choose all sorts of colors. There's blue, there's red, there's yellow. Just look at the website, you'll find all the options they have available. It really is quite comprehensive. So what do we have here? This thing looks a little bit different. As I mentioned, I made some changes. This one here is that cap that I'm going to use, 100 nanofarad capacitor. It'll be a film cap. It's bigger than the uh, SMD ones. This one is through hole, obviously. There we have the uh, pads for the uh, SMD resistors, and I've used three per resistor. So I can either use one or two in parallel or three in parallel in each of these legs. But there's something else here. If, you've, uh, if you're observant, you'll notice this is obviously a, a bigger board. There's another section here, which is um, something that... This is something that came up recently. I use this when I do uh, IF alignments, RF alignments of radios. And with the IF alignment, I've got... Um, I've, I need sometimes to put in very, very low levels, which my signal generator just cannot go down to. So I need to attenuate, and hence the attenuator steps that I've got here. But the other thing that I've noticed is that in some cases they actually ask you for a dummy antenna. In other words, instead of feeding the signal straight into your radio, in this case into your, into your antenna when you're doing RF alignments, you've got to simulate an antenna. Your uh, signal generator, my, in my case, it's a 50 ohm output, and that's not uh, the same as, as a normal antenna. So to simulate that, I found various options for this uh, antenna, and the one I've chosen is the one I've put on here. And similar to these switches, which I can switch in or bypass, I've got the same situation with the uh, 
with the dummy antenna, I can actually switch it in and it goes into the line before the out, or I can bypass it and that signal just goes straight through. But let's look at this uh, schematic and I'll tell you what's going on. This is the schematic that I'm using and it is not that different to what was used before. I've got my input here. It goes through that a DC blocking capacitor. Now this will be 100 nanofarads. It could be smaller, but it just uh, it won't affect the um, the impedance or rather the roll off at all. It's high enough that it'll allow all frequencies that I want through here. And then I've got my pi attenuator. Now the pi attenuator, if you don't know, is uh, a selection or a combination of three resistors two of them going down to ground with one across the top here and the way you work this out and I'll show you in a second is depending on how much attenuation and what impedance you want going in and going out that determines which resistors you need here and then of course because this is a double pole double throw switch you can bypass it completely so this signal can go straight through here over the top and straight through without coming into the circuit or it can switch down, go through the circuit and then out again. The same applies for the other three. And again, depending on what attenuation steps you want, you can change that. And I'll show you that in a second too. Then I've got another um, DC blocking capacitor, just in case DC comes in from the output, you never know. Um, and then this goes through another switch in a similar configuration where I can simply bypass it and it'll go out or I can force it to go through this circuit here. And this circuit here is a dummy antenna. You'll find on the web various uh, schematics for different antennas, dummy antennas. The one that I found to be most common is this one here. Um, it has a, 300, a 30 ohm resistor in series with a 125 picofarad capacitor. It then goes through an inductor of 20 microhenries. In parallel with that is 320 ohms and 400 picofarad capacitor. And then that goes out. So this will simulate an antenna going into your set. And this is important for various reasons. But the main one is that when you're adjusting your RF alignment, one of the adjustments you're making is the uh, antenna circuit. You're tuning your antenna front end, or rather your front end, your RF front end, so that when it receives a signal from the antenna, it can tune to the station that you want. This is then obviously to mix with your uh, oscillator frequency. Now, obviously, because you're doing dealing with a tuned circuit, which is affected by whatever's connected to it, in this case, it'll be a signal generator. If the impedance of the signal generator does not match what an antenna would look like, it will be off. Therefore, it makes sense to feed it through one of these things. So that's what I've added to here, and that's the main difference. In the previous um, iteration of this that I built, I had decided on 3 dB, 6 dB, 12 dB, and 18 dB. And as I mentioned, somebody brought up this topic very fairly, that 18 dB is already possible with 6 and 12. So I accepted the uh, suggestions and made this one, and I'm making this one 24 dB, which means I can get 3 dB, I can get 6, I can add the 2 and get 9, I can get uh, 12, just that one, I can get 15, I can get 18, and this just goes on to the extent where if I've got 24 dB here, 24 if I add it all up, uh, 36, 42, 45 dB maximum, which is more than enough for any of my needs. And this is what I'm going to implement here. With a pi attenuator, you've got your input in there. It goes, it has a resistor across here to ground. It has a resistor that goes in line, another one to ground, and it goes out. Now, these two resistors are identical. This is called R2. That one's called R1 for our purposes. And then I've got the values here for the various dB ratings, 3 dB, 6 dB, 12 dB, and 24 dB. Now you can get these values from various websites. I think the one I've used is Laverve or something like that, but just type into Google Pi attenuator calculations and they'll ask you what your impedance is going to be, and I've put in 50 ohms, and you, they ask you how much dB attenuation you want, and they will give you the values for R1 and R2. 
Obviously, R2 is two resistors, so each of those is the same value. Now, in the case of 3dB, we get 17.62 ohms. Now, obviously, getting a resistor that's 17.62 ohms is wishful thinking, but if you add 3 in parallel, and obviously you would try and get it with 2, okay? But if you can't, and usually you can't, to get it as accurate as possible, I've allowed for 3, and therefore, I've found that if I put these values in, I get 17.82 when I need 17.62. Hey, that is more than close enough, okay? Much more than close enough for the purposes we need. So those are the three resistors I'm going to put in there. In the case of R2, it's supposed to be 292.4 ohms. And I found that if I put 330 ohms, 2.7K and 56K in parallel, I get 292.52 ohms. So again, 292, 292. The same applies for the 6dB. I need 37.35. With this combination, I get 37.28. Nearest, damn it. This 150, I'm just using 150. I could go crazy here, but it really is not necessary. With this combination, for 12dB, I need 93. I get 93. 83, I get 83. As you can see, the decimal points are very close as well. And these are standard values that I have on SMD resistors here. The resistors have all been soldered on there. You can hardly see them, but that's the idea, surface mount stuff. Now, I've started, well, I did populate this section here, and uh, a few issues came up. One of them is trying to get the resistor values right. This is supposed to be 320 ohms and... 30 ohms. Well, I found that I had to piggyback two on top of each other. I don't even know if you can see that, but the space on the board is perfect for that. You put one down and the other one in parallel. For 30 ohms, I think it was 33, and a 330 comes out to exactly 30 ohms. And the other one was uh, 330 and 1K2 or something like that. But I'll show you the result. If we look at that guy. 31, supposed to be 30, well, 30.1, that's as near as damn it. This one's supposed to be 320, damn close, and yeah, the battery's going. Okay, so the resistors were sorted, and then I had to do capacitors and inductor. This is supposed to be 20 uh, microhenry. I had two 10 microhenries, put them in series, if you know... Um, Inductors are like resistors. You put them in series, they add. You put them in parallel, they divide. The next challenge was the capacitor values. Now, we needed 125 picofarads. I don't have 125, so what I did was I used a 68 picofarad on the top here and a 56 picofarad on the bottom in parallel, and that comes out to 120... What is it? 124? Supposed to be 125, not bad. Same applied to the 400. I used a 330, and on the other side, I used a 68, so 398. So again, damn close. So what do I need to do now? Well, I need to put the switches in, solder the switches in. I need to put these two in. I'm still not sure whether I'm going to put them on this side or on the underside because of the, um, if you remember, this is going to go onto the onto the front panel, that panel, so I'm not sure that I'll have enough space. I'll probably put this from the underside, which makes no difference. And then the um, the B and C's, actually, the ones I have here, I think I can actually place them there and solder them directly onto those tags. I'll have to just see. I think that'll probably be quite good. And then the spacing to the top of the board, well, we just have to make sure that it can... Um, it's comparable to the um, to the switches. Uh, this will probably work because you can adjust. This is slightly higher than the switch, but you can adjust this. I've got a bit of space here. I can bring that out just to make sure that it fits nicely onto my module, my little casing here. They'll all be stuck on the front there. And then this thing, as I've mentioned before, clips onto a rail that I have on the underside of my uh, of the shelf, the first shelf on the bench. So let me get that and we'll get back to you. By the way, um, another shout out for uh, PCB Way. 
these boards are perfect. If, uh, <laughs> in fact, this time I have exceeded myself. I don't think I've made any mistakes. I'll probably find a reason to to change it again, <laughs> as usual. Um, those two, I'd probably have put two pads. I should have put two pads. I should have foreseen that this would need two resistors to make up that value. I could do the same for the um, the capacitors, so I don't have to put them on the underside. But we'll see. I'm a stickler for perfection, but I think even I'm going to settle for this. Um, unless I want to do version 3.0. That'll probably require another add-on of something. I mean, since the last one I've now put on the dummy antenna, who knows? I'll probably find something. Let me do the switches and uh, solder everything on, and then we can get this uh, tested. And here we are, finally. All the switches are in. Admittedly, these are switches are actually for solder tags. I'll probably do another one for myself with the actual PCB switches, which I couldn't get on time. The usual problem that I have with supplies, but fortunately I've got four other boards, so that's not a problem. And then on the underside I've put in these two caps, the DC blocking. And now these guys are going to go here, but I'll probably put them in there first, because that's all being drilled. And then I'll just solder that, label this, and then we can test it. It's coming out nicely. And here it is. Done. Now, I haven't uh, actually done a faceplate. What I'm doing is um, I'm going to create three or four when I have a couple more of these pods done. I just do it on a um, overhead transparency, laser print it, and then with uh, the spray glue it gets stuck on and it worked quite well with the dummy load so it should work with this as well but here we have it we've got the input there output there minus 3 db minus 6 db minus 12 db minus 24 db you can sum them the antenna uh, dummy antenna off in the above position on when it's down now we're going to test it and i'm going to test it with a 455 kilohertz signal i'm going to set it up and show you the result. I've got my signal generator producing a 455 kilohertz signal. I'm giving it 10 volts peak to peak. Just makes it easier to for us to uh, check the results on the scope. Now that's coming out and that's going into the input of this uh, attenuator and the output is coming to the scope. It's got a 50 ohm termination. Remember this whole thing is 50 ohms. So there's our 10 volts. Minus 3 dB, we should get 0.707. Uh, 7.04, not bad. Go back up again. Now 6 dB, we should get 5 volts. And we got 5 volts. Now 12 dB, we should get half of that again. 2.5, we've got 2.48. Now if I give it another 6 dB, which is 18, I should get 1.25. I get 1.24. And if, if I, what I've got at the moment is 12 and 6. If I do 24 dB, I should get half of that again, so 0 0.6 something. So 0.62. So this thing's working working pretty well. And if I sum them all up, this thing practically disappears because now I've got uh, 24, 30, 42, 45 dB attenuation. It's still there, but it's a very small voltage. Okay, good. Let me go up here again. There's one thing I don't understand here though, and that is when I do the antenna, I get a very big drop. That's 10 volts peak to peak through that dummy antenna. It's coming out at 3.360 millivolts. I think it may have to do with the capacitors. I'm not sure. I'm doing it 455 kilohertz. If I go to say 4 megahertz, there we go, 4 megahertz. So if I was testing a 4 megahertz signal, which will be shortwave, 
then that's what I'm getting. I'm still getting a cut, but not as dramatic. And if I go higher, say 10 megahertz, it's the same, it plateaus. I am not sure that that dummy antenna is doing what it should. If you can tell me, I would appreciate it because the rest is working pretty well. This, um, this thing here is not that good. This is a real cheapo dummy load. It shouldn't be doing that. So there's obviously connection problems on there. But the result is that it's working. So once again, I want to thank you all for watching. I want to thank PCB Way for sponsoring this video. I really do like their work. It comes out very, very well. Really, it, it gets to the point where it depends on your abilities and not the producers. If you make a mistake on the board, it won't work, but it's your problem. It's not theirs. So uh, yeah, this is definitely something that I will continue to use. And um, this little thing is going to become very, very useful because it makes it so much easier to work with this, having it on that, uh, on my, under my shelf than using that little plastic one that I've been using before. And as you saw, I tried this with 10 megahertz. It seems to be okay. Um, I was worried about interaction between the, the different uh, sections. I don't think that's a problem. Um, most of the time this will be in the, um, well, yeah, I suppose it could be 10.7 megahertz if I do uh, FM alignment, but uh, the AM will be 455, which is what I tested on. So it's on the ballpark and it's working well. So once again, thanks for watching. And if you've enjoyed this, please click uh, like and share and subscribe to the channel and all that jazz. And if you want to support the channel directly, you can do so on Patreon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. And stay safe.